dashboarding, my most popular video to date, and I wouldn't have guessed it. But it definitely makes sense. The things I said in that video are true, that most people come into Odoo to get better reporting, and dashboarding is one of the best ways to do that. And while I will argue that when I made the video, it was fairly complete, there are some new tricks that I've learned since then, and some new features that have been added since then. So what are we going to cover today? Well, first, we're going to make a pivot that actually changes when we have new data. It used to be that everything was just static, but now we can make it so it's dynamic. Then I'm going to show you how you can take data from two different models and aggregate it. Finally, I'll show you how to get the value from a filter so that we can create dynamic ranges. So let's go ahead and hop in. So the first thing we're going to go over here is how to make a pivot table dynamic. Now it used to be in Odoo Sheets that once you had the pivot set, your columns and your rows stayed static. The information in here would update, but otherwise you're kind of stuck. Yes, I know you could reinsert the pivot, but ain't nobody got time for that. We're gonna start out in sales. Make sure you have your documents app installed or we can't create a new spreadsheet. So make sure and install that. We're gonna go into sales and then we're gonna go to our pivot table here. I'm gonna remove the filter and then I'm going to go ahead and group by salesperson. Very nice and then group by order date here. Now that I got my lovely pivot table, we're gonna go ahead and insert that into a spreadsheet, which is going to be my dashboard here, which is sales test. Go ahead and confirm that. And there I have what's called a static pivot table. So we're gonna to go to our first page here, which is what shows up on the dashboard. And we're gonna do something pretty dang simple. All we need to do is go to the top left cell that we want the pivot table in, go to data, then go to reinsert dynamic pivot, there's actually no difference in the list here and we want to go to the pivot that we want to be dynamic okay that looks pretty similar to what we had right because obviously we haven't added any more users or anything like that but let's add a user real quick and let's look at our dashboard to make sure that we know what's changed so right now we have four users we're going to add another sale with another user all right it's so going into sales we're going to do a new one here customer is going to be deco they like to buy lots of stuff from us and we're going to add a product here Okay, um, conference chairs, they've got a massive conference room that they're putting in. We're going to save 50 of these. Don't know if that's an effective conference, but we'll leave that debate for another day. And then we're going to go to other info, and we're going to make a new salesperson or user called Little Uncle. Okay, and this is going to be littleunk at test.com. Go ahead and save and close. Okay, give it a second then confirm it and let's go back and see how that affected our dynamic pivot so I haven't refreshed yet I want to make sure you guys see this working so we're gonna go ahead and click F5 and refresh and you can see that little uncle is now represented now let's stop and talk about this for a second because I only see this as useful when your dashboard has plenty of space and most times that's going to be if this pivot table is the only thing you have on your dashboard the reason for that is because if your pivot table grows has the possibility of overriding other things that are important to you and that you want to show. So be careful with this, but it's great to know that now our pivot tables can be dynamic. Okay, now let's talk about taking information from two or more different models and combining it into one table. That's what we've done here. We've taken information from our sales orders and also information from our journal entries, specifically our invoices. We're able to do this because both sales and invoices are attached to a user. So the key here is that we need to have some sort of central linkage, some record that both data sets refer to or both models. So as I said, our central link right here is our user or our salesperson. So we first need to start off with getting our link in, okay? So we're gonna go in, we're gonna go to users real quick. And then from users, I'm going to click this little gear right here, gear, cog, sunshine, depending on how you describe it, and go to spreadsheet and insert list in spreadsheet, okay? And we're gonna throw that in our dashboard here in our sales test dashboard so that we can reference it. All right, so now we've got the username. That's super useful. But what we need more than anything is we need the ID of the user. Now you don't need to fully understand this, but the ID is the unique identifier for the user inside of our system. That means when another record is linked to this user, another record like a sales order or an invoice, what's really stored on that sales order or invoice is this ID. 
So the nice thing is, is that we can use that to get our information and aggregate it. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time trying to explain that concept, but what we want is a list of names. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert a column left here and say ID. And we're going to use this for our reference here. So I'm going to copy this guy right here. I'm going to go ahead and say this needs to be the ID. Now, the other thing that I want to be able to do is make sure that this list is fairly dynamic. So we're going to say equals one plus one all the way down. Okay, so I've got six records that I can get right here. And I'm going to say, okay, in the list for my index, I want this to be the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and make that so it's always referring to A. Go ahead and go all the way down. Those are my IDs for these specific records here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the name just to make this a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and grab this here, A2. And this is the technical name right here. I can actually refer to any technical name in the list. So if I want to add something here, it makes it nice and easy. So we're going to say this is salesperson. And then we're going to go ahead and clear out the rest of this. We don't really need it and then go get our data. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my tab. We're going to get out a spreadsheet, go to sales. Okay. Uh, we're then going to go to a pivot table. Okay. And we need to make sure that we're grouping by the relational field here. So that is salesperson. And just so you guys know how to find the related field that links everything. So if I hover over salesperson right here, it's telling me that this field is user ID and that the relation is res.users. Now we don't need to go into this a ton, but the list view that we got right here, the list that we inserted is based on res.users, which is our model. You see that right here? So we want to group by that inside of our pivot table. So we're gonna go to the pivot. Um, Sales orders, I mean, I don't care if it's filtered down on that. Um, and then we're going to, again, make sure that we're grouping by that connecting field, which is salesperson here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and group by month because I like that. It gives me another little factor here. And then we're gonna insert in the spreadsheet, go to my dashboards, sales test, go ahead and confirm. Okay, now I've got some great little information here. So if I wanna see the total sales orders during our period that we filtered down on for Andrew test two, that's going to be this guy right here. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. I'm going to go back to this list right here. I'm going to say sales orders. I'm going to go ahead and paste this. So right now, this isn't referring to anything in my list, but you can see this user underscore ID right here. It's saying the value for our user underscore ID that we're filtering all this data down on is 10, which would be Andrew test two. We don't want that to be the case. So we're gonna go ahead and say, back that 10 off, go ahead and click the ID right here, make that absolute on B so that makes it a little bit easier. And we're gonna see, okay, Andrew test one has no sales, but Andrew test two has 161, which if we go back to this, hey, that's working pretty well. All right, so now we want our invoices. So I'm gonna go ahead and put invoices, clean this up so I'm only in one spreadsheet here or I'm only in the spreadsheet once. We'll go ahead and duplicate, go out to spreadsheet, um, or out of spreadsheet, I should say. Go into accounting, go to customers, invoices. Again, I wanna feel, uh, again, I wanna find the field that these are linked on. So if I go to other info and look at salesperson, that again, the relation at the bottom of this, and you need to be in developer mode so you can see this little window pop up, but that relation is res.users. So I'm going to use this salesperson as my group by. So coming back out, let's go to our pivot view here, and we're going to group by salesperson. So add a custom group, go all the way down, go to salesperson, cha, that's pretty nice. And then we're going to group by invoice date again, because I like that. And we're going to go by month. And I want to see the total. Don't really care about the count at this point. And that's all good. So we're going to insert this in a spreadsheet. And it's going to be our dashboard sales tests right here. All right. So again, we want to be able to see what the total is for each of these guys for invoicing during the period that we've got set in our filter. So we're going to copy this, go back to our users list. I'm going to paste this. Oh, not there. I'm going to paste this there. Okay. And you can see, again, we're referring to the user ID here. 
and it's saying 10. Well, we want this to be dynamic based on what we've got over here. Okay, so we're going to delete that 10, move it over, and you can see all this helpful little information, but we're going to grab this ID right here. Again, lock it to B, and we'll go drag this guy down, and you can see Andrew Test 2 has invoicing of 161, which is accurate, and Mark Demo has invoices totaling 74,225, which comes over here and gives us that information. Now this is a great solution for dashboarding because I can come into this and I can say, okay, my list is going to be this size. If I wanna expand it, I can, but we're pulling in all the salespeople up to those top 10, and then we're getting all this aggregate information for them, which is super awesome. Okay, on to our last item, which is being able to pull the value of a filter that's currently set. Now, you may or may not know why this would be useful, so I'm going to show you why I think it's useful. So in my first real job, I was in charge of creating all the board materials. Part of that was creating comparative reports, okay? So I'd have things like, okay, here are our results for the current month, here are the results for one month before, two months before, three months before, a year ago, two years ago, so we could see how we did comparatively. Now, if you've watched my earlier video, you know that you can set this date order month dynamically, which you can't really see that right now, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. See that? We can go ahead and set this date order month dynamically, but to do that, we need to have this current month to start out with. All right, so you can see I've worked my Excel magic to where all this stuff makes sense. So I've got the end of the month right here, and then we can use that to get the actual month based off of this. But it all is based on our current month. So if I say this is 228.25, this all adjusts, but I need to be able to get this somewhere, and I don't really want my users having to type this in because that's hard to do with a dashboard without going into editing it. Now, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, but how you get this information is by going equals odoo dot, and it's going to be filter value here. Now, I've got this filter right here called period that I want to be able to pull March 2025 from. So, obviously, I need to come in, and in quotes, I'm going to type period. Okay, and it's going to give me the current value for that. So let's go ahead and use this guy to get my current month. So we're going to use the date formula here. Okay, our year is going to be right of this for, okay, our month is going to be left of this to, okay, and the day, we're well, we're actually going to add a month to this, and the day here and then minus one to give us the end of the month right here. Pretty slick, right? But to access our pivot data that is grouped by month, we need it in this format. You can see that by going over to this pivot table and look, 03, 2025. That's what we need right there. So we're gonna get that by formatting B2 with month, month, slash, year, year, year. So let's prove our point that this works here. So we're gonna say, okay, I'm going to take this, and we're not going to change anything except for our month here. Okay, so we're going to say 03 2025, delete that, refer to this. Okay, so that's good. That's 161 right there. Let's go ahead and try it for February and see if we get the same data that we want here. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this. Okay, date order month is February. Let's look at this. Oh, Andrew Test doesn't have anything for that. So we're going to try it for Mark Demo real fast. So dropping it in for Mark Demo. Go ahead and replace in this. And we're going to say 03 2025. Looks good. And Mark Demo for February had how much in sales? Well, it looks like it is working very well there. Well, that was quite a lot. But now you have some even more powerful tools in your tool belt to take dashboarding and do to another level. I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. As always, if you have any questions, please drop those in the comments below. I'm here to help. And if you need a little bit more time, go ahead and grab a slot on my Calendly, which is in the description. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you again soon.